Hi and welcome to another video. I thought it's about time to give you an update on my bread to alcohol video that I put out last uh, because it settled out, um, it fermented, settled out and I've got some interesting results to talk to you about. But uh, one of the things that happened, it, it fermented pretty quickly using baker's yeast and within two days it's probably reached a specific gravity of just under one triple zero. Um, but I let it settle for another couple of weeks before actually getting to this stage and, as you can see here, distilling it. Um, one of the things I did try though, because keep in mind, this is Sumerian, this is Sumerian beer, uh, bread uh, rice beer, uh, sorry, bread barley beer. And um, I took a sample of it, a taste of it, and I thought, hmm, this is interesting. It's just like a bitter ale, only flat. So uh, I've got a bottle of it I'll put aside here, wait for that to rack out and settle down and I'll rack it off, off and um, put it in the fridge and try it and give you a report on that later. So anyway, in my initial, in the last video, I remember I, I did two runs. I did one run with amylase and one run with molten barley. And the whole purpose of that exercise is to see which was the best. Well. I started thinking, I've got some results of 1040 from the molten barley, uh, from the amylase and 1050 from the molten barley. I thought, all right, okay, but it struck me that the difference might have been the, the volume of the molten barley increasing the alcohol content or giving it a higher specific gravity. So I decided to try it again. This time, instead of using molten barley, I used amylase, right? But I, and I didn't have three loaves, I used four loaves to try and compensate for the 500 grams of molten barley that I used the last time. Interesting result though, I went through and I've already finished it all off and I've got a specific gravity of 1040 again. So the 1050, the extra one potential 1 1.5 um, uh, alcohol volume is strictly from the barley. That the, the sugars gained from the barley itself. So it's interesting that. So anyway, to top it all off right now, um, I've got this next batch that I've actually done here. Uh, I'm doing this with a different type of yeast. So I've actually got Lauven 71B yeast here now. I'm going to be trying this to see if there's any quality difference between the end product from Baker's yeast and the end product from Lauven 71B. So I've got some activated yeast here. This is the Lauven 71B. I'm just going to put it in, give it a stir around, and that's going to be on its merry way very shortly. That's good. So that's all done. I'll report back on that. So, um, right, now we're going to look at um, some of the, the things that happened when uh, I did my end run. Now, for starters, I did it by a reflux column, the, the uh, standard um, 500 uh, reflux column, and uh, it came out pretty good. But I'm, rather than go and mix all that and then come here and talk to you about it, I'd rather talk to you about it and then mix it. One of the problems I had a while ago, uh, when I was actually doing my um, brown, my raw sugar run. If you remember that, I, I actually had a, a run I was doing with raw sugar because it had a somewhat um, rum flavour, or rum smell to it. Well, I ended up doing all that and I, I made some, um, and soaked it with some wood chips and it came out rather unusual, but it's rather wrong. I made a mistake from that. And I'm learning as I go here, but I made a mistake from that. And fair enough, it was a long drawn out process to find out that the product is not really palatable. The problem I had with that one was when I started my run, so you start on number one, up through to number 10. When I start on number one, have a sniff of that, it's very strong and um, acidy type of smell, slightly less, even less, getting somewhat neutral. So you can tell there's a variation of, of the heads going from um, the first part down to uh, the hearts where, that we actually want. The end product is very oh, wet straw-ish. Um, I did the run last night and I, I ran it through at one set temperature with one water supply. Uh, it started off really strong and happy 
and uh, at the end it simply ran out. It ran out of um, alcohol, but it was still bubbling away, but I uh, had it less than the boiling point of uh, water. So right now I'm going to basically do a little bit of a mix. I'm going to start putting these together. I'll, I'll decide whether or not to use those later. Having a sniff, because I'm looking for that, I'm like trying to identify the pungent smell that I could smell in here and in the first parts here. So um, that's still pretty neutral. That's starting to get a little bit, no, that's starting to get a little bit off. But um, that's might be okay. Maybe if we use half of that. I've got just under 500 mils there. Maybe if I use half of that and see what happens. I'll give that a little bit of a stir. We'll see if that pungent smell that I actually had in that bottle there is obvious in this. No, it's actually rather neutral. You can smell the alcohol, a little bit of flavour. I think I've made the right cut there. I'm going to discard that much from the tails, if you can see that. Discard two and a half parts from the heads. I think I've got 500 mils out of that, out of that batch of bread vodka, a uh, uh, bread uh, alcohol. I've got 500 mils, and I think that's going to be sufficient. So, um, yeah, so I thought I'd bring you up to date on what's going to be happening. I'm going to mix that with, oh, actually, I'll make a cut and I'll do an alcohol content. Well, I've just done the alcohol content that came in at 91% alcohol by volume. So um, I'll mix that with uh, some water and run it through some charcoal filters, and I'll give you the update with this. And I'll give you the update with that. If you enjoy what I've done, please like, subscribe and share. Uh, I enjoy putting these together and hopefully you enjoy them too. Um, it's a passion of love and I'm learning as I go here. Um, for people who have any uh, questions or any ideas about potential new videos, please feel free to uh, put it in the comments and uh, I'll be happy to actually take that into consideration. So uh, until the next time, happy brewing.